Pulse is a 1988 sci-fi horror film from director Paul Golding. The movie opens with... Hey, that's almost the Terminator font. Anyway, the movie opens with a matte painting of the local power plant. A bolt of lightning strikes, which means everything goes haywire. Well, you can't see it, but you can totally hear it. In a suburban neighborhood, Bill and Ellen are sleeping, but wake to the sound of a neighbor going batshit. What is it? You better call the police. It's okay! I just stepped on a Lego! Bill looks out the window to see things have escalated. Bill? No, it's okay. I'll just go have a nice chat with the guy wielding an axe. The neighborhood gathers around as the cops arrive. The police go to investigate. Aw, oh, damn, Steve. Looks like we got up here. They head inside to see the place has been trashed. What, does Keith Moon live here? They then find the crispy burnt body of, um, a neighbor guy. We cut to young David flying on an airplane by himself. I know they allowed this back in the day, but is this still a thing? David's parents are divorced, and he's been living with his mother in Colorado, but he's going to spend some time to live with his father and stepmother. While driving back from the airport, they fill David in on all the happenings in the neighborhood. You know, David, it's a good thing your school didn't let out last week. We had a lot of excitement around here. We had three police cars, an ambulance, a fire engine, and a TV cameraman from one of the stations. What happened? Oh, Mr. Jordan was brutally murdered! Look, right there! Guy was killed just a few feet from us. Hope you sleep well tonight. The father's kind of a security nut, so he put bars on all the windows, which I'm sure won't lock them in the house at some point. Your bed is a car! Yeah, but it's a fucking sweet car. Hey, the sign says don't drink and sleep. Don't tell me what to do. The next day, Bill is telling Ellen they have to go to a business dinner that evening. David doesn't want to go because he wants to watch the Dodgers game, so they leave him home alone. And here's one of the many reasons you want to hire a babysitter. Outside, the evil sentient electricity is making its way over. Well, it seems David discovered the blurred porn channel. The TV goes out, so David listens to the game on the radio. Today's kids will never know the struggle. He looks outside to see the electricity. Hey, we paid a lot for this effect. We're going to get our money's worth. Inside the TV, the electricity is alive or something. It starts to rewire the TV to do something evil. Like air nothing but reruns of Joni Loves Chachi. David's parents come home and he shows them the TV. But, uh, it won't turn off. Huh. I guess this movie takes place 20 minutes into the future. They call in an electrician to look at the TV. This is some great iced tea. He tells Ellen the bad news is the TV's fried, but the good news is he's got cheap trick tickets for sale. David goes to try to impress the local kids with his radical skating skills. It doesn't go so well. Maybe later these kids can rap about the Legend of Zelda. He takes his board around the block where he's able to impress the local kid Stevie. Hi Stevie, neighbor kid who looks exactly like me. Hey Dad, you've got some explaining to do. Stevie tells him about Mr. Jordan and how all the grass on his lawn died mysteriously and he blamed the kids. He then explains what happened to Mrs. Jordan. She was washing the dishes. She turned on the garbage disposal and there was something stuck in it. It was this metal thing. It wasn't even a knife or a fork. Some kind of metal thing. And when she turned it on, it shot that metal thing right up into her face. Shot it up just like a gun. Isn't that bad? It shot it up right through her eyeball. David's scared and tells his mother he wants to go back to Colorado. The next day, he's talking to Ellen. Hey, it's the McDonald's Moon Man. David and Stevie go to break into Mr. Jordan's house, but Stevie chickens out. All the electrical appliances are destroyed, and there's water everywhere. Just then, a detective from the 1950s falls through the ceiling. The old man's been following the phenomenon around, and it seems it's killed at least 20 times before. Bill wants to spend time with David, so he got tickets to the Dodgers game. David tries to tell them about the thing in the wires and how it's in their house now. He goes to escape, but Bill stops him. Uh-oh, dead grass. Bill's talking to Ellen. Aren't you supposed to take this back? Oh, I did. Um, they called this morning. There was something wrong with the tape. It must have happened when the TV set broke. I had to buy it. It cost 60 bucks. Great. Now we own a ruined copy of Edward Penis Hands. They go to sleep, and Bill's pissed because he won't get a refund on the tickets. Maybe if I leave now, I can catch the last three innings. Downstairs, the electricity is taking over the thermostat. Bill's at work, and Ellen has to go out, so they leave David home alone again? Maybe he would be better off with his mom. He's checking out the garage and gets locked in. The electricity then cracks the gas line and tries to kill David. Sure is a good thing they left the key in the ignition. David smashes the car into the garage door, making enough room for him to get out. 
and almost run over. The maintenance guy shows Bill what happened. Ellen thinks this is something more sinister. I mean, you don't know what's really happening here, do you? Do you? Look at the maintenance guy. Okay, whatever, crazy. Ellen tells Bill she's been hearing the voice in the wires. He's not buying it. Yikes, Bill almost nails Ellen with the pipe. Ellen goes to watch the ruined VHS tape when she hears the mysterious old man next door. She asks him about the houses. He tells her how to combat the electricity. He then tells her he's been living in a fallout shelter without any power. The hardware store in the mall has got a special on kerosene. It smells some, but it sure does make a pretty light. <laughs> crazy lady. She should invest in some propane and propane accessories. Ellen's been working all day, and she goes to take a shower. She remembers what the old man said and doesn't turn on the heater. Although she seems to have skipped this part. Okay. Turn off the faucets. Hey, she's got Marche's hair. She's taking a shower, and the heat goes from hot to thermonuclear. Oh no, how do showers work? How's the door locked? The door isn't electric. Bill breaks the glass, and Ellen's all blistered up. They go to the hospital, and she somehow didn't get any on her face. Finally, they give David to a babysitter. He's staying at the neighbor's house. Bill comes over, and they stay there rather than going back home. Hey, thanks for letting me stay in your house. Let me show my appreciation by smoking in it. Bill hears something weird in his house, so he goes to investigate. David wakes up to see his father doing something stupid. Bill hears the garbage disposal. Hmm, there's broken glass hanging over the edge of the train, and the disposal is on. I should keep staring at it until I get stabbed in the face. He hears a noise in the basement and gets locked in. Now the electric saw goes off. Same rules as the disposal. Keep staring at it until... <laughs> David to the rescue! Remember those electric bars on the windows? David hears a weird noise from the TV. Oh no! The MCP is scanning David into the ENCOM mainframe. The electricity starts flooding the house and the floor is death. How is the electricity turning the water on? David breaks a window to call for help, and ouch! The neighbors quickly stop giving a shit about David. Hey, I never liked that kid. Bill smashes through the floor and rescues David. But Dad, I'm not cold. Oh, okay. They smash their way outside to a bunch of shocked neighbors. Bill then lets the pole have it. My mom isn't going to let me play with David anymore. The cops show up and stop Bill. He did enough damage, and the pole comes crashing down, killing the pulse. See? It's dying! Look at all these components melting. Look at it! Bill and David are being taken away by the police and have a good laugh. Ah, it's so good to laugh! Back at Stevie's house, it's the creepy cat clock. I never trusted them. He smartly unplugs it. I guess the only thing left to say is... Whoa! The movie was written and directed by Paul Golding and cost a rumored six million dollars. Golding's film career started in 1966 with the short film Herbie he made with his friend at USC Film School, George Lucas. After that, he worked on a few documentaries and later went on to write the screenplay for the 1984 film Beat Street. Pulse was his first and last time directing. The film only made a little over $40,000 domestically. Ranked in box office grosses, the film came in 243rd out of the 254 films released that year. The original cut of the film was over two hours long, but they trimmed it down to 95 minutes to make it more exciting. You can see this within the film because Ellen goes from being skeptical to immediately siding with David over the strange events in the house. A young Joey Lawrence played David. He was already a fairly well-known child actor, having been on the hit sitcom Give Me a Break for six seasons. While this wasn't his first movie, that was Summer Rental with John Candy in 1985, this was his first lead. With Gimme a Break ending its run in 1987, they were hoping for him to transition into movies. Unfortunately, with the film flopping, he returned to TV. In 1990, he starred in the pilot for Blossom as Donnie Russo. The show was picked up, but they changed his name to Joey Russo. The show was also a hit, and Lawrence became a teen idol with his own catchphrase. He was 16 when he released his first album in 1993, which was a minor hit, mostly because of the single Nothing My Love Can't Fix. The song was used as the end credits music for Cop and a Half. Joey's younger brother Matthew was cast to play the neighbor Stevie. He was also in Gimme a Break and had a small part in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. David Morris and Tommy Lee Jones auditioned for the role of Bill, but the part went to Cliff DeYoung. DeYoung often plays the role of a father with movies like Dance Till Dawn, Flight of the Navigator, and The Craft. Roxanne Hart played the stepmom Ellen. She's done a variety of TV and movies over the years, from the original Highlander to a long-running role in Chicago Hope. 
Tim Russ had a very small role as one of the cops in the beginning. Although he's had a huge run in TV, movies, and even video game voice acting, for most he's known as Lieutenant Tuvok in Star Trek Voyager, but I think this was his best role. We ain't found shit! Pulse is a neat, creative little horror film. The concept is intriguing and works quite well. On paper, it sounds silly, but the idea of a sentient Pulse living in the electricity is no more far-fetched than other sci-fi films. The sound design team deserves some major kudos because while the film doesn't have a ton of visual effects, the audio does an excellent job of making the movie scary. With all the noises and subtle voices in the wires, it helped to make the electricity into a living thing. While they never explained what it was, I kind of liked that. Not everything needs to be spelled out to you. Sometimes just establishing what the villain is and letting it do its thing is enough. Oftentimes, the more we know about something, the less scary it is. It's sad this film flopped so hard. It's a different kind of horror film and one that shows how versatile the genre can be. Isn't that bad? It shot up right through her eyeball.